24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Good morning, everyone, again. In this uh, morning's Mass, uh, we remember Felix and Eileen D. Casmiro and Joseph Stats. Uh, today, uh, we are celebrating the 24th uh, Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand to pray the Angelus. The Angelus prayer, prayers on the back uh, page of the bulletin. The people's responses are marked with an R. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel spoke God's message to Mary. And she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I am the lowly servant of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word became flesh. And Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Lord, fill our hearts with your grace once through the message of an angel. You reveal to us the incarnation of your Son. 
now through his suffering and death, lead us to the glory of his resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, yes, Lord, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbors injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property, in payment of the debt. At that the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go, and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants, who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him, and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hope this is on. There you go. In uh, today's gospel, uh, Saint Peter, I he approaches Jesus, asking him how many times he should forgive his neighbor. And uh, just uh, thought we could think about that ourselves too. How many times do we think we should forgive our neighbor? Is there a limit? Uh, apparently the world wounded by original sin definitely thinks so. They might not even get to one, you know, for giving your neighbor once, right? And kind of get an idea of some of what's wrong with the world with our own sinfulness. 
So St. Peter, when he approaches Jesus, right, this, this passage comes right after last weekend's uh, gospel passage, where it's talking about uh, Jesus was teaching them, you know, basically if someone is unfaithful to me and doing something wrong, right, let them know. And we're responsible for that, to call them back to our Lord Jesus Christ and the church, right, to seek our Lord's mercy and forgiveness and to follow Jesus. And now St. Peter is asking, well, how many times must I forgive? Now, in their time even, seven times might seem like a lot. Uh, I just learned this week that uh, Cain, when he committed that first murder, fratricide, right, he's marked with that stain of his sin and he's sent off. And Cain is not sorry for it, right, he goes off. But the world will know what he did, and they still do, right? Uh, but he was worried about the world taking their vengeance out on him and you know, hurting him. And God said, if anyone hurts you for your sin, they will receive sevenfold that evil that they visit upon you. So in the gospel, you can kind of hear it's where St. Peter is generous, right? He's not going to harm someone or do, you know, let someone come to harm. He's going to forgive the sinner seven times. Uh, and Jesus says, no, you need to forgive your neighbor 70 times seven which would have been a huge number in their day as it is now. And that doesn't just mean only 490 times for those who are keeping count. Uh, it is an unlimited number of times. So I was just talking with Bella here this morning. So I told her I would adjust my homily. I said I would adjust the age from seven to eight. So I'll put it this way. How many of us would have made it past age eight if our parents didn't forgive us more than seven times? <laughs> probably more than 490 times, right? We wouldn't have made it past age eight, right? And then husbands and wives too, in marriage, right? The second of marriage, like, I don't know, sometimes it seems like one spouse might be doing the other spouse a favor, you know, if they forgive them. It's like, no. Their vocation as holy husband and wife is to forgive each other. They entered into that marriage covenant to love and forgive each other. Because heaven knows it's not just, you know, the husband who's perfect all the time, right? Uh, that's not going to happen. I had to say that because Bernard's here. <laughs> right? uh, both parties, husband and wife, you need to forgive each other. I don't know how you can go a day without forgiving each other for something, right? Uh, but that is really true for us all. Right? Really, like, it takes uh, great humility on all of our parts to recognize that it's not just people out there who sin, it's the one in here and in here who sins, right? The Our Father is quite a uh, serious prayer, especially when you get to the end, right? It says, uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, right? And if we fail to forgive our neighbor and have mercy on them when they sin against us, Lord, don't forgive us either, don't have mercy on them. That's literally what we're saying. Uh, and in real humility, we should be able to pray that, recognizing that all of us have sinned. Except the Blessed Mother. Uh, everyone else who's not the Blessed Mother, we sin. And thank God, because the church is for sinners, right? Founded by our Lord Jesus Christ, right? As part of our Lord's mercy and forgiveness to save us, right? So I, I was just thinking, like, uh, you know, at least the Catholic terms for the Christian life, the world does not understand what mercy is. Right? Uh, <clears throat> mercy, especially right, in a biblical theological sense, is a little bit bigger. Right? Uh, in the Bible, uh, the Hebrew word for mercy uh, is hased. Hased. It's like a spit a little when you say that. Right? Hased. Right? And that word is almost synonymous. It's not, it means mercy but it's also synonymous with love. Go figure. Love and mercy go together. Right? In the Bible then, this hesed, this mercy of God, right? Uh, one, we have no right to it. We cannot demand that God forgive us. Right? In this case, it doesn't work, right? Mom and Dad, you have to forgive me, because I said so. No, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Right? Uh, and most certainly with God, it does not. We have no right to God's mercy or forgiveness. The mercy and love that God extends to us is total gift. It's a God, 
a gift from God that He freely gives to us because He loves us. Right? Thank God, right? Or none of us would make it. Even with that 490 number, we're in trouble, <laughs> right? Uh, so what real mercy is, and the Bible too is that passive, that mercy of God is always uh, in relation to the relationship between God and His people, His covenant relationship with God and His people. Uh, and God extends that to all his people in the covenant as part of the covenant out of God's yet love and mercy for us. So humility. Recognize that we all sin and we are in need of God's mercy and forgiveness and that we do need to extend that same mercy and forgiveness to our neighbor. The world doesn't get it. Uh, look, I'm just listening to Bishop Barron this week. Look at the Middle East. Millennia of anger, hatred, violence, lack of forgiveness, lack of mercy, and the more someone does something bad to the other, the other side does something bad back, and it it just goes on and on. It makes me want to be a holier Christian by the grace of God, right? Because love, mercy, forgiveness must go together. Um, so there's that. I'm going to get Okay. So we got the humility part. Um, just a little bit about God's love. God always loves us. He doesn't love the sin that we commit, the evil that we do, but He always loves us. Uh, in the first reading uh, from the book of Sirach, it speaks about this, right? Like, hate and anger, right, are, uh, well, uh, anger and vengeance, are hateful things, and yet the sinner hugs on to them, right? Because typically sinners are not, you know, unrepentant sinners are not asking God's mercy and forgiveness. And they will not forgive their neighbors, but they can't give what they don't have, right? If they're not receiving God's mercy and forgiveness, they will not forgive their neighbor and extend mercy and forgiveness either. So some of how it goes for us to be, love our neighbor more the way Christ loves us, to be more forgiving and merciful, we each need to receive God's mercy and forgiveness, recognizing that we do sin, to go and receive the sacrament of reconciliation, make a good confession as often as is needed. Right? You don't have to wait two months to take a bath. Right? You don't necessarily have to take two months to go to confession either, as often as is needed. And then I'll just be, uh, share with you this teaching. It's uh, common to the church and the saints in the church. Uh, it's, this particular expression is from St. John Passion. It's based on an excerpt from uh, St. Paul's letter to Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, it goes like this, If you are angry, let it be without sin. Do not let the sun set or go down in your wrath. Do not give the devil a chance to work on you. Our hearts are created by God to love and to be loved, to be merciful and to forgive. Right? If we refuse to love, uh, forgive our neighbor and have mercy on them, we refuse to love. It's out of vengeance. We want to hurt them by depriving them of our love. Nothing good about that, right? Uh, so St. John Cash invites uh, this about anger. Root out all anger from your heart as soon as possible. Root out all anger from your heart as soon as possible. Did you hear any exceptions in there? None. Right? Root out all anger from your heart as soon as possible. Uh, the next teaching goes along with that. Why? Because nothing good will come from our anger. Only bad stuff beginning with hardening our hearts and refusing to love. If we don't love our neighbor, we're not loving God either. We can't say we love God and hate our neighbor. It's biblical. It doesn't go that way. Right? Uh, where God always loves us, He's always ready to have mercy and forgive us. But typically, when we get angry in a sinful way, we're not willing to forgive. We're not willing to have mercy. So humility, we all sin. Seek God's mercy and forgiveness regularly and as often as needed in the sacrament of reconciliation, right? And then root out all anger from our hearts as soon as possible. May God bless us all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, who begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And upon 
the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Open your hearts to praise the God of power and goodness, for he loves and know our, knows our needs. For all parishioners, especially parents, may Christ and the practice of our faith be the center of our holy family life. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dedicated clergy and religious leaders of our diocese who have remained faithful to their calling by God, may they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in their mission. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, that as we rejoice in the real presence of Christ in the most holy Eucharist, may we receive him truly as gift given by God. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Beirut, Lebanon, that they may receive the healing and peace of Jesus Christ as they grieve the loss of life and great suffering of many from the recent explosion, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they be set free by God's mercy when they seek his forgiveness. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We bless you, almighty God, King of the universe, because you called us while we were yet sinners. Through your grace and the Holy Spirit, let us humble ourselves and be more faithful disciples of your Son seeking your mercy and forgiveness, always, and faithfully proclaiming the gospel to all nations for the salvation of all souls. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise, the glory, the name, Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through his paschal mystery, he accomplished a marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, just a reminder, uh, as many of you already know, 
We have our uh, roast beef dinner fundraiser coming up uh, this coming weekend. If you haven't yet, please uh, get uh, your dinner tickets and uh, raffle tickets uh, in as soon as you can. Uh, please follow the instructions in the bulletin. I think I've got everything. I keep calling the roast beef dinner the chicken dinner. <laughs> it's a dinner. It has meat in it, right? <laughs> uh, but I uh, look forward to seeing you all for the uh, roast beef dinner. I think that's everything. Okay. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who cry about the world.